In the 1800s, Arkansas was known as the Bear State, but there were decades from the early 1900s until the 1960s when there weren't bears here at all. But through the conservation efforts of hunters, the bears rebounded back. This time of year is special because I get to see three old friends, James Lawrence, Brent Reeves, and the bears. Is there anything that you guys can't do? Maybe if we learn another song, we can come down and play it for James. <laughs> and of course my family, and I love them and see them all the time. No other type of hunting I do offers such a unique and intimate window into the life of such a secretive beast. This is my favorite hunt of the year because of mules, bows, friends, and bears. Hey, I'll tell you exactly when this bear camp started, the foundations of this bear camp, was in 2011. Me and a buddy of mine came to James's house, and we didn't know if James bear hunted or what, but we knew he had some land over in the mountains that was really good. And we came and we said, hey, do you mind if we bear hunt over there? And he was like, sure. And so me and my buddy go hunting. And it was the first day of season and my buddy kills a bear. And we're just as proud as we can be. It's his first bear he's ever killed. And we haul it out. And by the time we get back, it's 11 o'clock and we go by James's house. And we pull up in his driveway, I mean, just skid to a stop. We're so excited. Get out, James is up, he comes out. We sit around the tailgate gawking at this, you know, 180 pound bear for, for 20 minutes, telling our story. And James is like, oh man, that's great, that's great, that's great. Finally, we're like, well, all right, I guess we're gonna head out and skin this bear. And he goes, James goes, I went bear hunting this evening. And I said, really, you did? And he said, yeah, I did. And he shines his light over to side by side. And there's the biggest bear I've ever seen in my life draped across this side by side like this. And he had killed a sure enough 500 pound. I later scored the bear and it scored over 20 inches, Boone and Crockett. Oh, wow. And he had killed that bear. <laughs> he let us you tell had, our whole story. You had to suffer through that whole story. <laughs> <laughs> This is the evening before the bear opener in Arkansas. James Lawrence and I started bear hunting together in 2010 and Brent showed up at her camp not long after that. The first weekend is the crown jewel of my year and we do our best to make it a celebration. My wife Misty, my sons, and my mom and dad are here. We're planning to send my 15 year old son, named Bear, into the woods by himself for three days. Have you heard about this? I'm trying to think about if I made this up or if my brother made it up, but I want to say it's the Native American tradition that when the boy turns 13, they go out on their own away. Mm. When they come home, their mom says that they don't recognize them. Oh. I was thinking about giving Bear the cold shoulder. Just give him, yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. the journey is what makes them a man. When they right. come back, they're not a boy, and the mom says, I don't recognize you anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, are we going to lay odds that you're not going to grab him up and hug him? I'm going to a bear. We hunt bears in two ways. Over bait on private land, which we love, but we also hunt them on their natural patterns, finding sign, and hunting them like deer. This is by far the most difficult and lowest odds hunt That's that we bear. do. So you, you know where you're going to camp? How long, like, worst case scenario, how many days do you want to hunt? Three till Monday. Three. Okay, listen, if you kill a bear, you message me first and then Pawpaw, and we'll bring the mules up and come get it. But if we're out of range for four or five hours, you got to skin the bear, quarter it out, and start getting it down the mountain. So, all right, man, I love you, buddy. Love you, too. You know, do you remember we talked about this when you were a little boy? Do you really remember that? I do. When I said, one day, I'm going to turn you loose on that mountain, and you're going to go all by yourself, and I'm going to pick you up three days later. Word for word, we said that, and this is it. Yep. So, all right, man. Well, if something happens, we'll come get you. We'll come find you. Okay. All right. Love you, man. Love you, 
to. Five years ago, when Bear's brother and sister started killing bears over bait, he made the decision to try to kill one on public land without bait, using his bow, and he stuck with his guns. He's pounded the mountains the last couple of years in pursuit of his goal, but this was his first overnight trip alone in the mountains. In this location, I have to use my mules to haul in bait because there's no road access. I've been baiting this place for the last month, and I haven't killed a bear over bait in Arkansas since 2006 because I'm only after older age class males. For all the suckers that talk smack about baiting bears, it's actually an incredible management tool that allows hunters to be selective and game agencies to harvest the bears they need. We absolutely love it. This is Izzy. This is my prize. Arkansas mule right here. She'll haul a bear. She'll cross a river. You can shoot a squirrel off her back. Well, shoot a gun while shooting at a squirrel. She's good. I do all kinds of hunting. I mean, I whitetail hunt. I've hunted out west, done all kinds of hunting. And what's wild is that you hear people say that baiting is a lazy man's hunt. And of all the hunting I do, this is by far the most work, hour for hour, that I put in to my hunting is baiting bears. When you dig right down into it, it's a it is a very strong point for bear management. Wherever there is a bear baiting season, that game agency that has the research and the data has decided that to be able to harvest a number of bears that they need to to match their habitat, they have to use a tool, a management tool to harvest those bears. And here in Arkansas, they made a conscious decision that that tool is baiting and archery hunters. If we didn't have that, we wouldn't be able to match the numbers of bears we have with the amount of habitat we have, which when that number is matched up really great, it means that the bears are healthy. And so our bears are absolutely thriving in Arkansas. And it's because of the management tool being used to balance habitat. It's September 25th, the first day of the Arkansas bear season. We're, I'm gonna be riding the mule in. It's only about a mile and a half, but it's to a property that we can't drive to. And I'll tie them up and then walk in the last quarter mile to where, where I'm hunting. And if I kill a bear, I'll be able to come out and get the mules, use the mules to haul the bear out. So that's the plan, man. And it's kind of wild hunting a spot that you have, you know that an animal is coming to a ton. But this is just like an ephemeral moment in a bear's year. These bears will not be concentrating like this for very long. The acorns fall, they want to go to their fall ranges. So this is an ephemeral moment. So it's, and it's, it's kind of special. And man, I love, I love some Arkansas opening day bear hunting. We got in here at 1.15. It's now about 4.20. So, sitting here for two, about three hours, over three hours. No bears yet. Prime time will be the last couple of hours. So, I just really anticipate seeing a bear any second.
this big sow is the first bear that comes in. It's incredible to get to watch such a secretive animal up close. A hunt like this allows for some of the most intimate interactions with bears that you'll ever have. This bear looks big, and she is, but we're targeting older age males and letting the sows walk. Keeping the sow harvest low is important, but man, she's a real beauty. shot a big bear. <laughs> Old Brent Reeves made a great shot on this bear, but it fooled him when it started running uphill, which isn't a good sign, so he backed out. We gave the bear three hours and then took the trail back up. Oddly, the bear made a short jaunt up the ridge and quickly turned back down and ran less than 150 yards from where he shot it. The best thing you can do on a nighttime track job is pack a big light. Brent and I are coon hunters, so you better believe we've got them. Here he goes. He, he went down. Good. Good. That's what I was wanting to see. Sure looks like he probably went right here. He skid right here. Yeah. Yeah, there's blood right here. He skid right here. There he is, Brent. What? There he is, right there. Piled up. Dead. All right. All right, buddy. <laughs> All right, good job. Thank you, Bo. Got him. Oh, yeah. Right on. Got a little white on him. Yeah, man. I think that's him. It's the second day. The Arkansas bear season is about 12 o'clock. We skint bears last night until about 2 o'clock. And I'm going back in to this mule bait on the mountain. Just going to sit it out. So I've got more, a little bit more bait I'm carrying in today. And going to sit probably from about 1.32 until dark. So second day, here we go. It's dark at 8 o'clock. My big bears were in here all night long. They came in just after I left last night. So we just got to have one come in here during shooting light. There's two real nice boars that are in here. So just going to sit it out. It's hot. It's windy. Dry. Which is great for baiting bears. Um, I would rather this kind of weather than it be cold. For whatever reason, they're just really active in weather like this. I'm gonna sit till dark.
just after 6 p.m., two juvenile male bears show up. They're both in the 175-pound range, and they aren't what I'm after. The big males I am after are in the 300-pound range. I see one of the big shooters, and he's coming in. Izzy is parked about a quarter mile away, and now I've just got to go get her and convince her to haul this bear out for me. It takes a little bit of work to get a mule to where she'll let you put a bear on her back, and boys, she ain't for sale. Good girl. Easy, easy, easy now. Hey, that's a good bear right there. Good hunt, good mule. Good woman back at camp. What does what more does a man need? Good friends? Bear meat? Bear fight? Black bear meat fueled the American frontier, and bear grease is the rendered liquefied fat. It's incredible stuff. At one time, it was a valuable commodity and even used as currency. It's odd because if you polled America today, very few would know what it was, but at one time, everyone did. I think people just forgot. In such a modernized, mechanized, and digitized world, I love tapping into ancient stuff. In my life, bear grease is a metaphor for things forgotten but relevant. And when we make it, we celebrate life lived close to the land. May, June, June July, huckleberries in August, blackberries. He ain't never been caught, he ain't never been treated. Some folks say he's a lot like Brent. <laughs> Winter's coming and it's 40 below. Rivers froze over, so where can he go? We'll chase him up the holler and we'll put him in a well. Shoot him in the bottom just to listen to him yell. Woo! Oh, he's big around the middle and he's brought across the front. Running 90 miles an hour, we're taking 30 feet of jump. He ain't never been caught, he ain't never been treated. Some folks say he's a lot like James Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> never cease to amaze me. <laughs> Dude, well, that's a good one. Uh, Hey, that's better than snuffing ain't near as best. <laughs> you got it or something else. Yeah. Something we got a message from Bear Newcomb. He's been on the mountain for three days by himself. Smoked him at five yards. 
Full <laughs> pass through. Oh. I think he's dead within 60 yards. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I can't believe that. <laughs> that is the best thing that's happened all day. Man. <laughs> Old bear's gone. Dead come. Man, I looked over here and I saw that in reach blinking and I thought, why would he message me? <laughs> he earned that one. <laughs> Man. Man. Well, let's go get him. Hallelujah. Let's shut He's this down. John. <laughs> Your hands are bloody. Yep. Got it. Good job, man. <laughs> that made our week, man. Made our year. Yep. Where's he at? Back over there? Yeah. Have you been, did you get him skinned? Yeah. You got him quartered and skinned? Yep. Good job. So tell me what happened. So I heard footsteps probably 60 yards off and he came in. And I had my bow, and he was just like right so there. So if you're sitting in the tree like this, he's right here. Just about, he, probably a little farther out. Yeah. And then he turned around, and he was like directly in my wind. And he turned around, so I got nervous. And I drew back, and it was a good shot. And I shot and just nailed him right where I was aiming. And I guess I aimed a little. Well, he must have been quartering to you a little bit, because yeah. you said the entry was here, but it was far back. Yeah. And so then I just kept trailing him. And then I just looked at the songs. Yep. Proud of you, man. That's quite a feat. There's not many 15 year olds that could have done that, or grown men that could have done that. Stay up here three days by yourself, kill a bear, out of a tree saddle with a bow. Good job, buddy. Good job, buddy. <laughs> Let's go get him. Okay. Look at that. That is a beautiful bag, dude. Yeah. This is a major accomplishment. That is a that cool was, bear. took a lot of discipline, a lot of patience, a lot of perseverance. And then he's been up here for three days by himself while we were back at camp having the time of our lives. So to get that message today on the inReach saying kill the bear was incredible. And I think will end up being really developmental for him as a young man to see that hard work pays off. Pretty cool stuff, man, very cool.